Hey guys, um, so this is a sort of like response to the question that I've had numerous times for the Hubson uh, h 501 s um, antenna mod, the VTX to the video transmitter antenna mod that I did on my quad. And I've been asked for something, why haven't I made a video? Why haven't I made a video showing how to do it? Um, a couple of reasons. One, I thought, well, to be honest with you, okay, so it came down to two things. One, it's it, there's a lot to do for that particular mod, like taking the, the shell apart of the Hubson. That's quite a few screws, 24, I think. Taking the shell apart, getting it all split along. Then you've got to be able to get down to the bottom of the Hubson internally to the VTX area. And if I remember correctly, the actual connector, the UFL type connector, this like little tiny thing is underneath it. So you've got to be able to either take it out, you don't need to take the camera out, but you would need to get it all um, loosened up enough to be able to access this to put the new one on. Now this is a 15 centimeter jobby, this is a SMA female to UFL IPEX connector, 150 mil or 15 centimeters, and that's all you need. So you just take disconnect your old antenna, connect this one up, you make a hole, um, I can't remember how thick this is, but you just get a drill bit, if you've got, you're going to have to make a hole with a drill drill piece anyway, um, so you just measure it up next to your drill bit, so you can make the hole for it, and then you can put that in, and then you can try any antenna you like, remember, don't switch it on at all, unless you've got an antenna on there, otherwise you can really damage your your, um, your video transmit um, side of things, all right? So, but this is the big but with this. I had quite a few people say to me that they've tried doing the antenna mod um, and then the signal's been rubbish, okay? And what I would say to people is what I'm gonna say now is look, if you wanna get a better distance with your video transmitter, your video receive side of things, look at the antennas that you're using to receive with now i tried lots of different antennas on that quad pagodas work well you know um, i never tried i never got around to trying these i never even tried one of these because these are you know just pretty sort of useless don't get me wrong they work close proximity but they're not gonna be any good when you're trying to get any sort of distance but out of the way I didn't actually try one of these. I've, I've built a wing up now and I'm going to get out with that when the weather's not too bad. And I'm going to put this on the wing because it's tiny um, and I don't have a big battery or anything or big carbon frame that this has got to see through or transmit through, I should say. Uh, on the wing, it's going to be on... Uh, it's going to be able to transmit easier because it's just going to go through the, the foamy stuff, whatever the wing's made out of. So, but out of these... Out of these antennas, and I've used them all, I'm going to say that for the highest DBI one here is this one, but it's the hardest i found to keep tracking the craft with. Very easy to go out of tracking. It's got a very narrow, um, very narrow field of view, um, listening field of view. Let me just do a quick little demonstration of what I mean by this. Oh. And with this 14 dBi, if you can imagine here that, that this is 90 degrees, yep, yeah, we can say it's 90 degrees, about halfway, so 40, 45 degrees. And then if we go in a little bit further back to there, we get about 40, 40 degree field of view, okay, from this point. And that's what that's going to be like. So it's going to be less than 40 degree field of view. But if you were to move around or the craft were to sway, um, to drift left or right, you know, you've know, you got to be able to track this quite well. Using this one, we've got a slightly wider, I think it's 55, 50, 55, I could be wrong. So we go for a 40, 40 uh, about 45 degrees there, let's say. So if we just go over a little bit more. So we've got a wider field of view. If the craft is here, we can, uh, you know, say that's our sort of 40, we can only go that amount, or we can move the antenna on the controller, not very far, but we've got a bit wider there. With this one, again, it's even wider. So we can come out wider here, and this is a um, 10 dBi, 
or 10 and a half well, it's about 10 dbi anyway um, this is 9.4 dbi it works really well did four kilometers with this so i've put some images up so you can have a look at the images you know from um for this i've flown with this absolutely love it absolutely love it and this one again again it's got a nice wide and this is for where they're i uh, like 70 percent of their strength um, you know right in the middle area here is going to be where it's the strongest where it's going to be able to see the furthest but these also will go a lot wider and they'll be like using a you know decent omnidirectional area uh, antenna and they can be a lot wider so your craft can be in a lot wider sort of area so this is what i'd say to you is when it comes to doing a mod for the vtx side of your hubson don't don't with all the messing around with the antennas um i found that i prefer to use this on my quad anyway just because it's robust you know it's in a capsulated it's it's, it's in a toughened plastic so even though i loved using the pagoda it's very easy to damage all you got to do is like get stuck in a tree you fly the way i do low level through the bits and pieces down the, the grass and stuff pain in the butt come down from high you're going to smash it up this thing has survived so much and it's survived everything and of course these on the receive side and again these are in plastic casings and they work very well as antennas but they're in plastic casings so they're pretty sort of like pretty uh, hard to break unlike this if you put some pressure on that you're going to damage that and it's going to make it very difficult to it's finely tuned like this so it's going to make it very difficult to sort out. Plus side for one of these real real aces is that you can determine which polarization you want. You terminate off on the left hand side, you've got right hand side polarization. Terminate on the right hand side, you've got left hand side polarization. So that's a great thing about the uh, Martin um, Bart and his friend. Damn it, we should see what that said on there. Robin Thenus, I can't say that, I'm sorry if I said that wrong, but Martin and Robin have done a great little job there because the price is pretty good as well. You can pick these up for around about £10. Uh, these are around about sort of £25 and these are around about £60. Um, personally, for me, the combination of these two is absolutely great. Um, and even sticking an omnidirectional on as well as using one of these but chances are if i'm putting these on it's because i'm trying to do a long distance thing so i'm going to use these in combination i've even thought about getting the uh, top x2 of these which is like this two of these in i uh, like what this is here but yeah so that's what i'd say to you invest your money on your receive antenna don't be taking it quite apart don't think that's the answer to anything because i tell you what like the little antenna that's in the quad it's set in one of the uh, feet on the back side of your quad so it doesn't even have to try and see through the battery or a carbon frame or anything like that it's in a pretty good position where it is um, putting one on top of course depending on what angle you're at depending on whether your antenna's got to try and broadcast through the top of the battery it's got to broadcast through you know any any metal objects motors or anything the antenna that's actually in your hub zone is it doesn't matter that it's facing downwards it's still safely polarized it doesn't matter that it's facing downwards it's below what's going on it's below the motors it's below the battery out of the way um so it's going to work really well the, the way it's set up in it is optimal it is optimally set up in the hubs um but where you're going to really benefit and i promise you this where you're really going to benefit is from your receive antennas you're not going to go wrong with one of these at 25 pounds you're going to find it to be better than this you're going to find it better than any of these it works really well and then you're going to have the subtle differences between these and these um, there are differences don't get me wrong there are differences um, and this one will work better at a longer distance this is uh, this is more on par with the same sort of gain as what this is but this it, it does better and it, and it certainly will do much better for you than this maybe at a pinpoint on the longer distance this can work but it is so restrictive on how much um, movement you can have on how far you can drift with your craft uh, you, I, I found at 1500 meters i struggled to try and keep the craft in um, 
you know, inside the field of view of this particular antenna. Okay guys, hope you can see that. We're on 40, 1495, and I think it's either returning home, or because I'm not actually controlling anything, it's uh, just doing its own thing. I'm about to bring it back myself anyway. That's 1000, yeah. Well, you just saw as it went blank, it was 1500, so we can look at it like that. I've got to put this thing back in my pocket now because I've got to, I've got to sort this out. Okay. Look, look at it like this. Look, the further you go away, it seems to seem wider, doesn't it? The closer you get, you got less. So, having one that does cover even wider um, when you're slightly closer in, it's just a nice combination. And then you got this one for being further out. It's, it's just a nice combination. Um, yeah, but. I would say do that. Put your put your investment into this. Your time, the uh, you know the um, the antenna mod, the parts, the antennas themselves. Ah, don't go for this on the receive side. And I, you know, I'm not going to sort of like say I guarantee because everyone may do their mods slightly different. I've heard people say that they've just done the handset mods and now they can't receive things and you know. So you don't know who's doing what mods. But if you've got one that works anyway, but you want to up your reception and your video distance what you can see in your fpv then up your antenna get an antenna that listens better and has got a wider field of view for you so you don't have to be so absolutely precise with it and that's these go for these type of things even this because it's half less than half the price of this and of course this is half the price of this again but even with this, you're going to find it to be better um, for you to try and keep it in. Don't get me wrong, if you're, if you're um, really good at your flying and you've set out your, you, you know, you've done your homework on where you're flying, so you've got all your landmarks and all, your, all the helpers that you know along the way, so you, you know if you're pointing, you're holding your handset and it's pointing in that direction, and you've done all your, rec your um, recon work to ensure that no matter where you're flying out there, you can just look around you a little bit and you can make sure that you're going to be in line with how you got this directed. Then okay, fair enough. But if you want a bit more room, a bit more margin for error, these. Go for these because these will uh, really help you out with that and give you a better, um, better experience of flying. Okay, that's it. That's why I just wanted to put that in. Um, and I'm going to... Uh, cracking on my next video. See you in the next one, guys. Bye bye.